bags are packed Are you ready to go? This time tomorrow we'll be on the road Riding with you in the sunnier days I wouldn't want it any other We're back. Welcome to Children of Erte. And as usual, to start things off, we will head over to Adam to tell us about today's sponsors. Awesome sponsors, returning idol champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can find an Electrum chest code on the overlay and circulating in chat. So grab that code and check out that video game. If you're coming from the game, thank you for joining us. Again, stay a while and see what's happening in this <laughs> really wonderful engaging story that is uh that i'm not worried about at all in any <laughs> state, form or fashion also we have die hard dice and they have blessed us with some wonderful figure fossils that um we are rolling here tonight and you can go and get 10 percent off your order at die hard dice with the code erte and i think there will be a gift card uh, going around in chat. So uh, so keep an eye on that and you can win a gift card for Die Hard Dice. And finally, we have Sirenscape because epic games <laughs> need epic sound. And so I think that apparently since we're going to be, you know, outside this train going on tonight, there's going to be wind and, and plenty of it. So, uh, so yeah, thank you Sirenscape for that as well. I am Adam Bradford. I'm the CDO at Demiplane and I am playing Silas Jordan. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Elysia Marie, and I'm a costume artist, cosplayer, and performing artist, and tonight I am playing Beruza Armstrong. Hi, I am Jen Kretschmer. I am an author. I'm a creator of the Accessibility and Gaming Resource Guide. Um, I do a bunch of other fun creative stuff, and you can find me on Twitter as at DreamWisp or on Twitch as DreamWisp Jen. And I am playing Maeve Flynn, your friendly neighborhood troublemaker. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the content coordinator behind Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. I'm also occasionally a professional musician honking away on oboe. You can find more about me on Twitter as Oboe Lauren. You can uh, follow me here right now as Neb <laughs> and I go out into the snow. <laughs> And hi, my name is Hope Lavelle. You can follow me on Twitter at the Hope Lavelle. I am a motion capture performer by day and by night. I like to play some D&D. And today I'll be playing Robin Beckett, the Jiminy Cricket on your shoulder. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. And I am Deborah M. Wool. I am the storyteller for this evening and this campaign. So thank you all again for being here to play with me today. And thanks to everyone tuning in. Please make yourselves comfortable as we settle in for the fifth, sixth chapter of Children of Erte. Ooh, this is moving right along. Mm -hmm. So last time uh, we ended, you had explored this train that had sort of stopped in front of a, 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 a collapse of boulders, sort of an avalanche that had covered the tracks in front. Um, you'd explored the train, you'd found that the, the people, the staff that were there with you had all, you know, fled in the night, taking their things with them. Um, you were just now uh, deciding you had a lovely breakfast and uh, you were at noon <laughs> after a nice long uh, eight hours of deep rest, which you needed uh, terribly. Um, you have all made the decision to uh, equip yourselves and hike over the avalanche uh, tracks towards the Twin Creeks Mining Company, which you are fairly certain is not too far off uh, down the way. Um, so yeah, let's uh, start off. You're all uh, still uh, having your breakfast in the dining car and uh, let me know what you would like to do and equip yourselves with before you head out on your excursion. Um, well, I, I guess you guys, we, we've definitely decided we're gonna, we're gonna do this. We're gonna go right to the mine. We're gonna see whatever people are running from, right? I think, I think running... people from us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think they're running from the train, but uh, I mean, there's I probably something to run from ahead of us too. Like, let's let's be honest. 
You think she's not wrong, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's something that's going to be really interesting to take a look at. If anything on this train has been an indication, but we should definitely scavenge for. I'm going to say whatever we need, and then I'm going to flat out admit I've never even like camped outside once, never. Oh, so you're going to love camping under the stars. It's brilliant. I think that's the moment that I'll really enjoy it is when I see the stars and I have a, a sinking suspicion. The rest of it, I'm going to really wish I was back in my uh, my, my brownstone. But, but I want to go more than I want to be comfy. So, yeah. So what it's, we'll do, we'll make sure we pack some, some tents then that were in the, right? Yeah, tents. Yes, you had seen then, tents. Um, yeah. We're going to the mine, so we should bring whatever we need to climb in the mine. S Silas. It's going to be a lot of gear to carry. Climbing gear? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Silas, yes. A lot of lot of gear for you to carry. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, scary. I'm not going to carry it. I'm an old lady. <laughs> I wouldn't Maybe ask you to, Miss Robin. You know, Miss Robin, after you uh, dived in front of the exploding door, I don't think I could ever <laughs> ask you to carry anything. Yeah, so we need uh, whatever climbing gear we need to climb into a cave, which is also something I've never done before. It's going to be a whole bunch of new experiences for me. I'm really oh, sorry. Well, repelling into caves is the best part of an adventure. <laughs> so you've done that before too, Miss Robin? Oh, yes. I used to go spelunking all the time. I did a little <laughs> bit of it in Kentucky. Lots ah. and lots of caves. Yes, lots of caves in Kentucky. But you know even better, there's lots of caves in Georgia, right outside of Atlanta. I know your area. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that sometime. But uh, after we get everything from the train, we don't know... You know, if there's a werewolf in a silver prison somewhere on the train, like so, uh, things can come through. So, Maeve, I don't know. What, I don't know if you did anything with that lock, but maybe we should try to lock this stuff. Anything that we care about, maybe not being you know pillaged, put it into a single mm -hmm. car and then use those locks again. Because I think between the two of us, we can get back in if we needed to. I also think they didn't come into this car at all. They seem to give this car quite a wide berth. Mm. Perhaps we can leave things here. In the sleeper car? <laughs> because they, they went to the other cars, but not yes. this one, right? Everything they went to the luggage the car, they went to the, the dining car, um, but they, they did not go anywhere near the sleeper car. They oh, did. I think that we're going to come back here. Well, well, yeah, we have to find yeah. the shards and then bring them back for the to reassemble the mirror to it's free the epic quest. Yeah, well, well then we're is going that what to we're leaving. calling it now? Yeah, <laughs> we're going Absolutely. to be leaving everything. I mean, not everything, but it's going to be a very long time. Yeah, Gloria rattled on what we were expected to need to bring with us mm -hmm. at one point. Can we recall that? Is that exactly what was taken from the storage room or? Robin can recall pretty closely uh, what Gloria, <laughs> what Gloria said. Um, uh, Robin remembers uh, that she talked about climbing gear, um, that they had all of those things, harnesses and, and pitons and ropes and things for you to use for climbing. Uh, they had helmets with headlamps. Um, as you, you know, think back to what you saw in the luggage car, um, you do think you saw quite a few of those things. You, you know, you don't remember if you saw that there were five sets necessarily, but um, there were still climbing sets and, uh, and headlamp gear left behind. There's also um, a Bell Castle Cap was the, the glacier. Yes. And we're going to need those special boots that let you walk on ice without slipping and falling on your bum. Yes, the crampons. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then Blackwater Rashing. Bay was where we're supposed to see the whales, but I don't remember if we needed oh. anything special. No, I think we were just watching them rut there. Is that what they call it for whales? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. I have no idea. I was trying to be, you know, more pleasant than some of the other words that, that um, I've heard. I appreciate that. 
in in the storage area, did we happen yeah. to see a sled of some sort or like a? Ooh, um, let's go. You guys want to head over to the, to the luggage car and let's check it out? Check it out. It went over again. Yeah, Fantastic. and I missed it. Because I am very concerned. That's a great idea, Miss Robin. I'm very concerned about carrying five things. Of <laughs> so I got you. yes. Um, as you go back, you can see that kind of, you know, tucked in along the side, there is one of those, it's a pull sled. So there's ropes on the end and you hook it to your waist, Perfect. to your belt. And one person there's in, there's uh, snowshoes that go along with it. Um, and it's, you know, it's fairly long. It's a good five foot long um, sled, lightweight sled that you drag behind you uh, to take some gear. There's Perfect. the answer to our problems. What do you think, if Silas? If this works like a video game, we're gonna find a horse just over the hill <laughs> and we're gonna have to sneak up to the horse and then jump on its back and then we'll have a horse to pull the sled. A ghost horse. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> a werewolf ghost horse. A winged Ooh, werewolf. A werewolf fairy ghost horse. <laughs> a horse, that's a pegasus though, right? A horse with wings is just a pegasus. Pretty ghost darn pegasus. Oh, were horse fairy, yeah, wow. Oh boy. awesome. I'd love to see that. Um, is there anything in the the train to like if more than one person wanted to pull the sled? Yes, um, that's tricky. The way that the sled is sort of designed is to hook onto one person. Now you could always put more ropes on it and sort of go tandem, something like that. Um, you know, but it, you would be makeshift making that happen. It's not designed for more than one person. How does this snap to the, or uh, mm -hmm. connect to the belt? So it would be, they're, they're sort of stiff, almost like ski poles kind of that come out from there. And at the end are basically like carabiners that then there's a belt okay. that would go around, you know, so that simple enough to detach from. Yes. If you it could detach from the hill. belt. Yeah. Okay, yes. Got it. yes. 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 <laughs> Sorry. But it's a, you know, they're carabiners that'll screw down and tighten up um, along a belt on the person that then attaches down to the slide. I wonder if there's a way we can hodgepodge something together so that more than one of us can be pulling this because I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to be strong enough to pull this on my own, but I'd hate to leave that to one of you all the time. I'd like to be able to help. Well, we've got our rope and our quick wits. We can probably figure something out. You know, maybe like sled dogs. We can sneak up to no, them not... and grab them just Mush. like in a video game. Like the idea to lie. I mean, I would love a whole bunch of huskies. That'd be great. They're so fuzzy, Wouldn't that be but I don't... great. They're adorable. <laughs> I always wanted a dog, but it's it's hard to have a dog in the city, you know, especially if you don't have a plot of land or anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, yeah, we should we should see what we can do because it's not only if two of us are helping pull the sled, do, do I think I could help a little bit more? But then we could carry more stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, as you guys start yeah. to bring stuff out into the snow mm -hmm. and sort of make inventory, okay. there are oh there are five sets of harnesses. There are, however, only three sets of crampons and three snowshoes. How about tents? Okay. If we can tents? Get like How many tents? Three, three tents. Three. Mm, there's only two tents. Okay. How many we people can, can sleep in a tent? The tents look like they are single person tents. Oh. oh. Little, you know, little... I'm sorry, it was five sets of harnesses, so yes. three sets of crampons. Five harnesses, three, three crampons, three snowshoes. Snowshoes. and two tents and a partridge <laughs> yep. so so listen i will absolutely take a first shift with the sled where i can wear the snowshoes because these are like two thousand dollar jordans <laughs> and like maybe we can get to a point where at least we can get back to the track and i can walk on the track yeah i think whoever is pulling the sled should probably get the snowshoes yeah volunteer Okay. I don't mind taking second, taking second because I'm. I mean, I might not look strong, but I'm actually kind of strong. I mean, I saw you pull open that door, and that looked amazingly strong to me. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there? Can can I start to look this yeah. over and see about doing Helping? something to? Yeah, to make this into a two person. Yeah, give me flight. an investigation check. Actually, survival. Let's go with survival. This is camping gear. All right. Just for fun. Okay. All right. 
a 19. It's a 19, yeah. Despite having never gone camping before, maybe you've watched a lot of movies about it or something like that. This is yeah. more engineering than camping. Exactly, so. yeah. I think in some ways that might be a piece of it. Um, you do think that, that, yes, if you were to, like sled dogs, hook yourselves up in a line, that would help in some regard. Um, you also think there could be, obviously, pushing from behind would help as well. Um, you're not entirely sure how to engineer it to push from behind, but those would be kind of the best two options. I'll relay all that to everybody and then say, my gut says to go with the pulling because the pushing is probably going to involve someone being hunched over a lot, and that's going to get uncomfortable for very quickly. Well, I, I think just two of us doing it at a time in rotations is a good idea because then that allows everyone else to walk at a leisurely pace and hopefully, you know, kind of retain some energy just in case we get ambushed by were creatures or whatever else we are imagining might be out there. Sounds but if it's a husky, we're going <laughs> to. Or a, a, a winged werehorse. Yeah, if it's a husky, we're horse. not sneaking up on it. We're grabbing some some food and and figuring out how to bring it to us, yes. right? That's right. Yeah, but not the good stuff. <laughs> you can have the MREs. <laughs> good okay, so yeah, I'd like to take a little bit of time and yeah. engineer the sled so okay. that two people could pull at the same time. Yeah, so probably mm -hmm. about about ten minutes with some of the ropes and the further carabiners. You think that you can kind of hook. You know, the belt will go on Silas, which then hooks into the, the ski poles that connect to the sled behind him. But then if you were to hook rope onto his waist and then onto yours in front, you would be able to take a little bit of that, you know, force as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Only if you guys do like this. <laughs> when you're doing it, I think it might be kind of fun. So will you take the Never other mind. snowshoes then, Neb? Um, the other pairs of snowshoes? Yeah, I guess if if... If I'm going to, I'm happy to go in any rotation, but I do believe whoever is pulling should get the snowshoes. So mm -hmm. Silas, if you want to go first with me, I'll take the other pair. And then a third, a third okay. pair for whoever is going to be next in the rotation, maybe? Well, Sounds thinking, like Faruza. I'm thinking that, okay, so if, if for discussions purposes that Silas and I are the, are we the strongest of everyone? Not sure, like. I have, do we have any tests of strength or something? Do we want to arm wrestle? <laughs> no, why not? No. Okay. Hey. I, th I think it, it might be a problem if we have like the two strongest people together. Maybe it should be one strong person and then one strong less. Strong. Yeah. So, so, so Silas and Neb will start out, and then if they get tired for Ruza, you would take over for Silas, and mm -hmm. Maeve or Robin could take okay. over for Neb. Okay, yeah. great. And I feel like if I'm going to be up front, it's not that I'm really going to be pulling a lot, but maybe I could help stamp down the snow or watch out for issues. Okay. Basically, like, help lead gotcha. Silas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. A little bit of an aside here. Yeah. Adam is from the deep south and has no clue how snowshoes actually work. <laughs> oh, God. Um, they, they're wide, so they distribute yes. their weight across the snow. So that you don't so you sink don't into the snow. You can sort of walk okay. across the top. So they are saving the Jordans, then. They oh, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots, yeah, yeah, yeah. lots of snow is going to get up over on those Jordans. It doesn't, you know, you. it still sort of mounds up. The difference is your whole leg isn't sinking into the snow. So it will, keep, it will help. So my shiny pants are fine, though. Your shiny oh, pants okay. are, will be, you know, and, and right. you're, you're doing much better by your shoes. Got it. Uh, mm -hmm. With okay. the snowshoes than, than the not. The more you know. <laughs> but, yeah. I grew up in Buffalo, and so part of me is trying to ignore the, the, the like, looking for skis and looking for snowshoes <laughs> and looking for all this stuff that Neb would know nothing about. <laughs> <laughs> looking for skis. Um, Cross country is a thing, you know? Yeah, maybe, maybe they were going to take you skiing on the glacier. You don't know. Yeah, Neb grew up in New York. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, in the city, and she never that's left true. the city. Like, she literally has a driver's license. She didn't license go to Killington right? didn't or anything. She yeah. to have ID. She's <laughs> never really driven before. She's never, like, she visited her aunt in the Poconos once. Right, right. Which yeah. probably oh, would have, I, I would have mentioned it at some point. So, yeah, Neb does not know. Cool. I don't know anything about being outside of the city. You've got, you got, but you got a sled, you got some snowshoes. So right now it is just Robin and uh, Maeve who will be trudging through the snow in their 
own uh, rain boots. <laughs> and, and keeping a lookout, keeping and, like, you know, lookout yeah, while yeah. we're. All right. Um, so I think, you know, you, you, you've grabbed some MREs, you've grabbed granola bars, you have some rations, you have things like that. You are already bundled up in your own personal warm clothes and it is helping and with the sun shining down, it's, it's, you know, it's warmer than it was certainly at 3 a.m. You can still feel that little bite, but you're not suffering. So as we begin to kind of take the sled and move forward towards the engine, um, the first thing that you notice that is different than before, as you come around towards the front, right at the edge of where this avalanche seems to have crossed the tracks, there is a mound of snow and rocks with a, two um, branches that have been crossed and oh. dug into the ground. Oh. Ooh. That was done on purpose. And it looks fresh. Yes, very, very fresh. It's on top of where the avalanche came down. So since the avalanche. Oh. Maeve, do you have any theories on what this could be? You seem to have know a lot of things about stuff that's sort of mystical sometimes. I, I think this is less mystical and more their grace. I mean, do we want to see who it was? No. I think I mean, it's it best be to keep our spirits up and keep going. All right. You know, we can pay our respects to whoever they were and keep going. I understand mm -hmm. a little bit more now why they ran. If someone had died during this, then... Yeah, um, we should probably keep going, right? Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to lose any sunlight. You know, want it to be dark while we're out there in the middle of nowhere with them. I mean, being perfectly we'll honest, I probably would try to find out how they died and like dig them up. But at the same time, we're about to walk in the frozen wilderness for a while. And I don't want to catch some kind of necro disease or something. So <laughs> I'm going to leave it. Okay. Okay. All right. You continue to move forward then. As soon as you come to the edge of this avalanche, you can see it's taken down trees and rocks and boulders. This is tough, tough terrain. It's going to require some climbing up and over of things just to get kind of up onto the snowy part. Um, you've lashed things down. The the, the sled comes with, um, you know, uh, stretchy bungee cords to kind of hold everything down. So that's fairly well, but still it's going to require quite a bit of climbing over. So how would you like to do this right at the front is this is where most of the rocks and trees have kind of, you know, um, uh, been sort of pushed, made a pile. You can see if you can kind of get up over this first red ridge of trees and rocks, you'll be able to get up on top of the snow that has kind of slid in. Yep. Um, okay. Listen. A MJ once said that obstacles don't have to stop you. If you run into a wall, turn around and don't give up. Figure out how to climb it. Go through it or work around it. And we just have to be like Mike. If if I look from the direction that the avalanche came in yeah. to where it's gone, yes. how far would we need to go to go around it completely go around it well it. you'd have to go into the woods so the avalanche the snow has come completely covered over the tracks and for a good 50 feet it goes back down into the woods where it's, it's trampled down some trees but that seems to have sort of stopped it that barricade of trees but it would require going into the woods you know through the trees to go down and around this thing but it's not like i said not very far but 50 feet do we want to just go around it i know we're worried about going into the, the forest, but it's the middle of the day and that's not that far. And the equipment too. won't travel well over rocks. It won't. I mean, I won't travel well over rocks, so. <laughs> Nor will I. Yeah. yeah. Um, is Robin's strength special. still, is Robin's strength still at a, uh, Oh, sorry, um, yes, after your long rest, you are fine. Okay. Um, hey. Maeve is wearing a brace on her ankle. Yes. Okay. At this point. Gotcha. So around? I think we like, should go around. Okay. Like I mean, the great MJ, MJ said. MJ around said, it was right. one of the options. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Um, here we go. 
<laughs> so you start to head your way back, uh, turning down now to sort of go down um, the slope off of where the train. So the train is sort of on a, a level section where there's woods on one side and then it slopes down the side of this mountain as it goes down the other way. As you begin to go forward immediately, Neb and Silas, you feel the weight of this thing kind of pushing, pushing you from behind. That's why there's these sturdy poles so it can't just completely slide into you, Silas. Hey, hey, However, hey Neb, maybe we just ride this thing down though. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like fun, but then how do we stop it? Uh, I'm sure the trees would stop it. <laughs> I mean, and then they'll stop us, right? Well, it's got like the things in the front, right? Like, D Do uh, sleds come with airbags? <laughs> okay, okay. Probably makes sense. That's fine. I, I, I admit, it sounds like a lot of fun until we hit the trees. <laughs> and right, considering well. I'm up front, I would rather not. Mm. All right. Let's let's be very careful then, because right. we might be riding it down whether we like it or not. That's that's a good point. All right, I would Do you like want me to go ahead. go ahead, maybe scout out a bit ahead and see what we can find. That sounds like a very good idea, but I no. won't be far behind. It is you go ahead, but I will be very close. Okay. And then okay. Feruza, do you want to be behind the sled just to kind of keep an eye yeah. on it? Okay. Yeah, I think I'm going to stand behind and also if it starts to look like it's speeding up and about to take you guys with it, I can anchor it from behind. Nice. Okay. So we have Feruza at the back sort of steadying the back of the sled. Um, on the other side, we have Silas, Neb in front. They're all sort of connected in this line, trying to sort of steady the sled as they slowly, carefully, deliberately make your way down this bank. Um, Maeve sort of trots ahead. Now you and, and Robin don't have snowshoes on or anything to sort of help you. So that's, it's it's difficult um you know your leg goes in probably up to your knee um and as you said you have you know you're braced on the other side that one you know having to kind of keep you know pulling your legs up and down and, and inside this at a certain snow. point Maeve reaches into her pack and yeah. pulls out a collapsible cane and okay. collapses it and starts leaning on it and she starts she, leaning she on that that immediately kind of gives you just that extra sort of push that you needed. Robin, you stay, you know, close about 10, 15 feet behind Maeve as you approach the line of the trees. Maeve, how would you like to do this? How do you want to make your way through scouting through this this woods? The snow gets significantly less deep once you get the tree line. Um, as much as I can, sticking to... I'm a little nervous of the shadows, to be completely honest, after... <laughs> after yesterday but i also don't mind the forest i i kind of i kind of like it here i feel in fact i feel a little bit more safe isn't eh, safe isn't necessarily the word but yeah a bit more comfortable than out in the open next to the, the mountain with everything around so yeah it seems that i feel like i can maneuver through here okay a bit more um so are you wanting to be stealthy, stealthy and take your way through okay so go ahead and give me a stealth check uh 21 21 so pretty quickly you do sorry sort of, 19 19 still really good um pretty quickly no. you 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 find your way in and kind of you know feel your way along the trees and you just find you kind of know the way that they're spaced and the way that the sun is going to hit them. And, and you know, these trees are covered in snow from above. So not much of the sunlight is coming through. It is quite shadowy. Um, and looking for the dry patches where you can step and you won't get the crunch of snow beneath your feet. Um, as you begin to kind of make your way forward, what are you looking for? Uh, I'm trying to see what's ahead of us. And right. if there's anything that I can see near by that might be an issue anyone watching any creatures gotcha um sort of listening to hear if i hear birds or let's start with a perception check then okay 12 a 12 um it's really very very quiet you hear the wind um you hear maybe a bird or two but it, not not really tweeting loudly every you know here and there maybe a little whoo, whoo, 
something like that. Um, and you don't see any animals. Um, that doesn't mean they're not there, but they're you know, extraordinarily well sort of disguised and, and used to this environment. Um, and even though you know your friends are directly behind you, there is a, a large sense of just being very isolated, very alone, um, possibly in a peaceful sense, but also alone. Uh, Robin, you're not too far behind her. How would you like to enter the woods? Um, she's not necessarily being quiet about it, especially, okay. you know, her, her rain boots in the snow, like <laughs> crunch and squeak. Um, but she is being cautious and she's yes. keeping her eyes out as she, she's going to continuously scan. Great. Let's give a perception check for you as well. then. 19. 19. Um, you do hear the crack of twigs kind of off. Every once in a while, maybe something white that matches the snow perfectly just seems to sort of flit across your vision. You don't quite catch what it is, but there are things moving out there. <laughs> uh, Robin's going to just, you know, if she can in mm -hmm. the snow, maybe find like two twigs, maybe, okay. or two sticks, yes. if, if that's possible. And she's going to be like, I learned this trick from the parent trap. <laughs> and she's going to start clicking the <laughs> sticks together. Great <laughs> noise. <laughs> Meanwhile, extraordinarily quiet Maeve up in the front is like, oh my god. That's <laughs> <laughs> the opposite of what we're trying to do here. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe she was a woods guide. <laughs> there you go. Um, so Maeve, yes, you continue your way forward, kind of, you know, sneaking throughout the trees, uh, you know, doing a pretty good job of hiding yourself. You know, Robin, a couple of feet behind you, <laughs> stay back, you know, just sort of banging your face. <laughs> the rest of you have just sort of, again, as you carefully kind of <gasps> using your, you know, relative joint strength to kind of pull the sled a couple of times, it sort of skids to the side a little bit, but you ride it. And now you make it to the tree line. How would the three of you like to make your way through the woods? As loudly as possible. As loudly as possible. <laughs> I, I mean, that's what Neb is going to do, but by accident. Um, <laughs> Neb is going to trust that Maeve and uh -huh. Robin have the scouting done uh -huh. and is going to concentrate on what is right in front of us okay to try to pick out the the easiest path okay. and the most direct path so that silas and i don't have to haul this too much and right. as a secondary objective but certainly <laughs> certainly like i'm not going to go off the track to do this right she's also looking for like a really sturdy branch or something that she can use like a ski pole okay cool okay. um so let's start with you guys so we'll do let's do a strength check to just pull this thing now uh, neb you can use your intelligence modifier because you are spotting rather than pulling can we do board. athletics um sure okay. so my so my intelligence modifier is plus three and so three. i'm giving that to, to you're giving that to his strength check thank you so as he pulls it you tell him the the best places to put and his you said feet. that was a three a plus three Okay, so that is going to be a dirty 20. Dirty 20, nice. nice. So as you begin to move forward, Neb, you're really keeping your head down and looking back behind. And, you know, if you see icy patches, you you warn uh, Silas about them. And if you see the sled beginning to drift, you can tell him, you know, more with your right side of your hip or things that you're kind of helping direct him so that he doesn't exhaust himself, that his strength works for him, not against him. Uh, for Ruza, you at the back are also kind of keeping an eye on it. And, and, and any time it starts yeah. to drift to the side, can kind of pull it back on track mm -hmm. a little bit, keeping it yeah. moving forward. Um, can she also like, because yes. she's just keeping her ear behind to see if we're being followed by something okay. at all too. So every do you like to do a perception she... check, please, Farooza? Yeah, she just wants to keep looking behind her just to make sure. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Oh, 17. 17. Mm -hmm. As you're at the back and, you know, you can just see through the trees, you can see Robin ahead. Maeve, you can't see at all. You, you okay. think she's up there somewhere, but she's hidden well and she's kind of way up ahead there and the, the, the woods are thick. So, you know, at a certain point, you just can't see anything even in broad daylight. Um, as you are going though, you get the same sense that Robin did, which is that, did you hear something? 
And as you look in the trees, trying to kind of discern, maybe it was just falling snow, it's hard to tell, but something seems to be moving off in sort of the trees. I think we should uh, pick it up, you guys, as much as we possibly can, if I mean, that's I'm possible. Already like Schwarzenegger and Conan the Barbarian. <laughs> You can hear already. It's hard work. You know, Silas mm -hmm. is already starting to pant a little bit, you know, and as you know, you've, you've got some altitude here. So you're all feeling it's a little bit thinner air than you're used to up here. Um, Maeve, up ahead, you've now gotten down to pretty much the sort of tip where you're going to start to turn around the bottom of this. And, and you really can see where the trees, I mean, this is like 15 feet of snow that has just piled up like a you know, a snow uh, plow has come by and just piled it up. These trees have stopped this coming. And even here, you can hear the of the trees as they sort of creak under the weight of this wall of snow. I have concerns. <laughs> <laughs> That's what <laughs> made me like to have concerns. <laughs> However, infecting. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm of sure nothing will. bad will happen. And mm -hmm. I'm going to take a sip out of my flask. It's okay. cold. And I tighten my leather jacket around me. I, I'm wearing a festival belt around my waist with a number of things in it. Okay, great. Got one of my flasks in there. Um, and I look back to see how everyone's doing. Okay. As you look back, you can still see Robin bang, bang, you know, off in the trees. It's much harder to see the crew with the sled. You can see some of them because some of their clothes are fairly bright and it shines through. But again, there's these thick, thick trees that they kind of come in and out. Um, so you really can sense them more by their sound. Um, their Silas's pants are flashing like a signal. They are. <laughs> that, they were very reflective. We pants. may have to cover those up at some point. <laughs> um, however, Maeve, as you sort of turn back to look, you now hear this little creak back in the woods and, and, and a streak of white as suddenly there's a low growl and a wolf pounces out of the woods coming straight for you, running fast. Um, oh dear, it died. Here it is. Uh, as it <laughs> flies through the air, its mouth wide open. It is a pure white wolf. Ooh, that is some darn good math. That is a 24. Oh, to hit. To hit you, Maeve. It hits, and then Maeve yells out, don't touch me, and she reaches okay. into her pocket, and she, as a reaction, um, and has, like, pepper spray. Yes. That, in a cloud around her, um, goes Ooh. off. Fantastic. And, um, or a pocket taser. Take Do I make a con um, save? It is going to be a, a, dexterity, a dexterity saving throw. Dexterity saving throw. Um, and do I still hit or not? Uh, you will hit. I will hit. But I will take whatever happens to you. Or whatever happens if I fail. Yes. Gotcha. Okay, dexterity. Because it was a 21 to hit, right? It was a, yes. Yeah. Uh, or higher, 24 to hit. I oh, think. 24. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Um, this is a really nice roll. This is a dirty 20. Uh, then it, uh, it will take half. It will take half from me. Okay. Which is going to be... Ooh, uh, eight points. Okay, not bad. Eight owies. Um, so as it you know pounces towards you, um, you know, sort of it's it's gigantic paws. I mean, this thing, this wolf has got to be eight feet long. It weighs you know a hundred pounds. Its fur is thick. I mean, it looks like a polar bear practically. As it pulls, you know, pummels forward towards you, its jaws landing on your shoulder. It bites down, doing. 10 piercing damage. Oh, Please gosh. Please make a strength saving throw. Um, this is going to go very badly. Oh, uh, no, no. I, I, I'm now at one hit point just from Oh, no. And my strength <laughs> is not my strength. Mm -hmm. Strength saving throw, please. Okay. Jeez. Oh, okay. This one suck. Okay, that doesn't suck. 16. You were able to hold yourself up. You brace back. You've got that, you know, extra stick that you're using to sort of support you as it puts its paws on you. You're able to hold yourself straight, not mock not being knocked prone. However, its teeth, you know, pulls, ripping the flesh out of your shoulder as it 
growls at you. At this point, you all have heard this. If you'd like to jump into initiative. Oh, yeah, to hear. okay, good. Yes. So we hear her screaming. Basically. We hear her screaming. Got um, it. Up ahead, you you know you can sense this large presence. All right, so go ahead and roll, and I will ask you Six. in a moment. Oh, sorry. Sixteen. All oh, right, sorry. so that's okay. It'll just be easier if I go on. All right, let's start with Neb. Eighteen. Eighteen for Neb. Oh, and really well. <laughs> Robin. Sixteen. Sixteen for Robin. And Feruza. Six. Six for Feruza. And Silas. Sixteen. Sixteen for Silas. Uh, Silas and Robin. Silas, you want to go first, or Robin, do you want to go first? What do you want, Silas? You, you can. If you, you can determine by dexterity, which I think is Silas, or you can choose. Uh, I don't go mind first. going. Okay, go. You, you oh, go. Okay. You go. I'll you go. go. All right, Robin first, then Silas. Okay, and uh, Maeve. Oh, Thirteen. Thirteen for Maeve. Okay. Neb. So you are attached <laughs> to Silas and this sled. You are about. 30 feet away from where you hear Maeve scream uh, and sent and just to see this like large white figure you can't really make sense of ahead of you. Um, but we did, we, we made this so that you could unclip. Yes. Quickly. Right. Yes. All right. I'm going to to Silas, although I'm not even going to really turn around I'm going to be like, I'm going to go check on her and I'm going to unclip. Okay. And uh, as I'm running up, is this wolf the only one I see? Or I think once again, all Neb knows about to, to look around. Okay. Check. Um, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to run up to Maeve and the wolf. Mm -hmm. Do I get the sense that this thing is hunting or scared? Um, Without a check, yeah, uh, it's it's big, it's strong, uh, it's you know it's hunting. Okay, it surprised you, you know. Mm -hmm. It managed to get a surprise. Okay, um, Maeve looks super hurt, and <laughs> Neb is going to panic because I always thought wolves were like little huskies. <laughs> That's the biggest animal I've ever seen in my it is, life. It is ginormous. It's bigger than a St. Bernard. It's bigger than a Newfoundland. I mean, this is a enormous beast. And in her panic, she's going to yell at him and be like, get away from her! And there's going to be this explosion of sound that comes out and pushes Ooh. forward into this creature. I need it to make a constitution Con? saving throw DC 13. It's probably pretty. I don't make it. I have an <gasps> eight. Okay. So it is pushed 10 feet away. <gasps> okay. And it's going to take a bunch of damage. Okay. So as you, you go, get off of her. I, Robin and Maeve, you see this thing just fly into the air. 15 feet, you said? Uh, 10 feet away. 10 feet fly into the air and sort of fall on its back down on the ground in the snow. Uh, this enormous creature. Go ahead and give me your damage. It takes two thunder damage as I rolled one and one. Uh, <laughs> which is, you know, okay. The, the, the thing I wanted was to push it away. And right. it's, I think the, it's deafening to it. It's not actually deafened, but like right. that's the force mm -hmm. of this yell. Right. And then Neb kind of startles herself with it. Okay. Yeah, like mama bear voice just came out. Yeah, and then Maeve, we gotta, get, we got, we should, we should get back with you everybody. You see Maeve's blood spattered on the white snow, uh, you know, kind of heating it up as it, it sort of sears through the the, the cold snow. And yeah, that's, Anything that's else? all. All right, I can do. Robin, you saw Neb sprint past you. She's in the snowshoes, so she moves quite a bit faster <laughs> than the rest of you as uh, she runs forward across the snow. You watched this. You can see it as this huge white wolf that took, uh, you know, this huge bite out of Maeve's shoulder. Robin, what would you like to do? Um, Robin is is going to. Um, so so Neb got. Uh, um, Maeve back? She pulled her back? Or no, they... she just got there, sort of yelled at the wolf, which 
amazingly sort of you know blew it across the the clearing there um and but they are both still right there 10 feet from this thing that is sort of lying on its back in the snow but starting to turn itself around to face them again its teeth bared okay um uh okay um robin is going to reach in her bag and pull out a bottle of water okay and just just throw it on the ground in front or around the the wolf she, if she has to move yes. forward she will but this is a 60 foot to, okay foot radius this is gonna be 10 foot cube great uh she could throw it on the ground and it it immediately freezes <gasps> and it becomes slick like grease yes yes needs to make a dexterity saving throw so it is already prone. prone. I'm okay, oh, it gets pushed, not knocked down, right? With um... uh, yeah, I believe it's okay, just pushed. Okay, so Hold it's on. still on its hind. You know, it landed like a cat. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, wolf uh, on its <laughs> on its hind legs, even though it got blown back. So yes, it will it's make a cat the wolf. It's a cat wolf. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wait, it's a cat wolf. ghost. Cat ghost. <laughs> where fairy? Where fairy wolf? This might thing. actually be a werewolf. I rolled a one. <laughs> So it immediately slips in this icy, uh, you know, slick uh, ground that you have created for it here. Um, it sort of, you know, and then sort of rolls onto its back and you see it, you know, like Bambi on the ice trying to kind of get its, its, uh, its uh, uh, space back here. Okay. Good. And, Anything uh, else, Robin? Yes. And then Robin will start to do this like little back and forth on her feet. She yeah. just, she's just going to say, you know what they always say, the tennis stance is the tennis, wait, the tennis stance is the ready dance. And then she's, uh, she's causing her, uh, she's basically going to be, uh, you know, she's going to be able to retreat very expeditiously. Okay. From yes. now on. Fantastic. So she is ready to retreat. She's dancing. Is that all? Tennis stance is the yeah. ready dance. Okay. The tennis the tennis. dance is the ready stance. Yes. Yeah. 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 And the tennis, tennis dance, dance is the ready, is the ready, the ready dance. dance. Which is a real phrase I learned doing I tennis. love it. <laughs> um, Silas, you are still attached to the sled. And so. It, 30 feet away. Am, am I able to um, am I able to detach with an you interact can. object thing? Okay. Yeah, you um, can detach. It's not going to take just... my full action. No, okay. it won't take your full action. All right. So uh, I'm going to detach and I'm going to run um, a little bit closer, okay. uh, probably, you know, um, definitely on my way uh, towards Maeve at this mm -hmm. point. And then um, I, as I'm going, just almost subconsciously, um, under my breath, uh, it's never going to give you up, never going to let you. And, and so I'm just like singing it um, as, as I'm like running and just snow's going yes, everywhere. Yes. And um, and that uh, is laced with some kind of energy. And um, so uh, that is going to restore um, seven hit points. Maeve, as you hear this song in the distance, you can't help but think of that that beautifully dorky music video that goes along with that song and it just brings a little smile a little chuckle to your, to your face and just just something about the the wound on your shoulder as you you look down at it and you sort of feel yourself boogie a little bit it's almost as though it heals a little bit in this moment you've never seen anything maybe maybe it's the cold you don't know but Something about hearing that song, it just sort of cheers you up and, and this just <gasps> begins to kind of knit itself back together. And that was the bonus action for my yeah. action. Um, as um, So as Silas sees yes. the, a little bit of shoulder, yeah. you know, Bob, and um, and and he just kind of <laughs> mentally knows, like, yeah, she's feeling it. And then uh, and then he turns his attention to the uh, to to the wolf and uh, just uh, shouts, hey, you dung nosed maggot breath flea bag why don't you pick on s and then he sees how big it is oh never mind never mind you know but <laughs> it's a dc 14 wisdom save 14 uh, wisdom save oh i fail it all right. wow um so, so does... yeah i mean you might as well have been going bad dog bad dog, <laughs> bad dog and like waving a newspaper around it kind of goes four points of psychic damage four points oh, there we go and it is going to have disadvantage on its neck 
next attack roll. Okay. Ooh. Anything else, that Silas? That is it. All right. Um, <laughs> Feruza, from off yeah, to the okay. side, you hear a... <sighs> and you see another of these huge white wolves back towards you, just stalking you right along the tree line. As it hears its comrade sort of whimper it turns its head but then turns back to you and this thing is like sideways right or sideways so you're facing ahead looking at Maeve but off to the side it is now stalking just towards you along the edge of the tree line and she sees everyone take off so she assumes mm -hmm. that something it's crazy went on just you <laughs> she saw Nev detach herself she saw uh, yep. Silas detach himself and she's like, it looks like there's a party. And she's going to try to ruffle in her bag to yep. take out her axe. You know it. And she's like this. Come on. And how far away is it? Uh, right now, it's probably about 20, 25 feet away from you. Okay. Um, immediately, I mean, like, fight or flight just comes in. Yeah. And she can tell this thing. And she's going to run. She's like <gasps> this. <gasps> She's gonna scream and she's just gonna run at it with her little baby ass. <laughs> okay, so um, it's not your turn yet <laughs> in the in the initiative. However, oh. uh, you are ready for that. I love okay, it. I'm we'll come right back it. to it. You're ready. It's that's just its move. <laughs> okay, Maeve, uh, oh. standing there in the snow, magically something. It feels better. You're not sure. It's crazy moment but the the wolf itself is sort of floundering on this icy patch about 10 feet away from you I look at it and i say i have my eye on you and um i then look at it and i i say no <gasps> and again the there's a, a force that comes through the woods yeah. um it stirs the snow a bit this time and almost channels them into channels it into a, almost like a bullet um, pushing through um, snow bullet. So is it upright yes. on the no, slippery spot? It, it, it is. is. I have prone. advantage on it. You have advantage on melees. You have disadvantage, disadvantage. on range. Okay. Um, fair enough. But it uh, spell attacks is, is it? I it's a range spell attack, so it's probably I just a think so. I think any range. So that's fifteen. Uh, a fifteen to hit. With disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Is with a disadvantage. That will hit. Okay. okay. Um, it so it matter if I did it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, many spells also involve making rage attack. Yeah. Okay, good. So it's going to be three, three four, five. Five points of damage. Okay. Okay. So yeah, so as, as you stand there, you know, feeling the healing, a little bit of boogie and go, no, or, you know, I've got my eye on you. No. And the, 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 as you said, the snow kind of congeals in front of you, these little pellets of them that just... Kind of rise towards this 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 wolf that's lying on the ground, uh, pelleting it almost like snowballs of of anger. Um, yeah, it's actually <laughs> almost more like a, a yeah a punch to it. A it's punch. A, okay, an impact to an it. An impact. So yeah, so the it, almost like a this this yeah, it sort of hits it, and you can see this sort of <gasps> almost sort of uh, loss of 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 breath in its lungs kind of goes out as it does. Um, anything else, Maeve? Uh, and I say, it's not personal, I promise. <laughs> you just bit me really hard. And then I move backward as quickly as I can to Fantastic. get closer to okay. uh, the rest of the crew. Okay, and you'll great. probably see Neb is wide-eyed grinning at you. <laughs> like, last night in the room, it was dark and there was stuff going on. But, like, right here in the daylight in the woods, and she's just grinning. Wow. Yeah. What? Amazing. I, I, I don't, I, 
We can talk about it or later. You're running, you're running pull, you know, Maeve, you ran 30 yeah. feet, you go as far, well, 15, I guess. Uh, it is, no, just, but yeah. It, I need to get to wherever they are. Okay. It's not, so you, that would you, be about where Silas is. Yeah, would have Silas about 15. Well. So you yeah. can, you can sort of backtrack, you know, making your way through this, this, this heavy snow to get back towards where Silas is without. Can uh, I duck slipping. behind the sled a little bit to try and give the sled a is still another of, 15 feet? It's still further. You it's can do better. it, but it's difficult terrain. So you'll have to. Is make there a tree I can kind of? get behind i'm trying yeah. to give myself a little, a little bit, bit of, of cover. extra protection yes because mm. uh, ouch you, you, i appreciate yeah. silas's uh <laughs> thank you for the yeah song, hey, hey, i suppose you, you did magic i did magic what? Like, did I, you, I, like you did magic. i just like, told I, it no i don't no, i, I like said something and your shoulders started knitting up did you see that i thought it was the cold no 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 i did magic you did magic i saw it <laughs> At this moment, as Neb is grinning and watching, and Robin, you're standing there with your sticks, kind of taking all of this in, um, a third wolf oh, comes God up goodness. behind the one that is prone. It almost sort of stalks up next to it, looking down, seeing that ice, icy patch, and kind of turning around, avoiding it. Now we are at Feruza alone, back towards the, uh, the sled. There is one stalking towards you. You may now do your run forward. <laughs> She's gonna run forward. So wait, no one sees what Feroz is doing mostly, right? No one's, everyone's sort of forward. Everyone's focused right now on the one that attacked okay. Maeve. So, so it is kind of just you alone there unless you decide to make a racket about it. Uh, no. So she's thinking, oh, you know, we... <laughs> I mean, you're yeah. about to make a racket, so... You are about to make a racket. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm excited. <laughs> that would be very funny. Um, she's, I mean, her first thing. So, so if you, if you were watching this, like you would see, like when she's first like yells, yes. like you would see these like little tiny, like electricity, like in her eyes. And even when she brandishes this little tiny, like used X, little tiny, like sparks are coming off. And as she's running with it, that she didn't notice at all. And she's sort of thinking to herself, maybe we shouldn't have wished for pack animals after all. <laughs> and she's just going to swing at it. So as as she gets to raise it. your flickering axe above your head and in your snowshoes, just you have to take those really big, wide, like baby steps in order to. <laughs> but you gangly can... person like, yes, yes. <laughs> you run across the snow. And as you do, you see it sort of speed up and rise in its hind legs to meet you as you raise your axe above your head. Go ahead and make your attack. Okay, come on, 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 come on. Oh my God, seven, nine misses unfortunately um as you bring it down it just sort of dodges off to the side you just swing you hear just a little bit you see a little bit of its fur kind of float in the air as you gave it a little bit of a haircut down the side of its body uh you pull your axe back up out of the ground uh sort of ready there directly next to it um anything else for um, no, that she's not going to move. She's right there. Okay, you're in the pocket. Back up to the first one. Uh, the first one, you know, uses its movement to kind of get itself stabled up on its legs. It then begins to bound forward, running towards the group again. Neb, I think you're the closest one at the moment. Probably. Oh. It rises up, opens its jaws. Oh, that's also a good roll. That's a 22. I'm yeah. rolling so well. I'm so sorry. I mean, my armor class is pretty low so you didn't have to roll that well all right oh my gosh okay that's only nine piercing damage only uh, and with nine Run. neb neb's down looking okay. at this creature and there's still like a bit of wonder on her face yeah. as she's looking at this thing and realizing what neb had done and oh so it has disadvantage it has disadvantage Okay. Oh, All right. that, is silence. that the one? I got confused. I thought it is. Three. This is the one. Okay. okay. This is the one, yeah, this sorry. Sorry. <gasps> nope. I rolled better. Sorry. No. <laughs> All right. And she's like fascinated by this creature for just yes. a moment. Yes. And so when she falls over and goes unconscious, it's mm -hmm. that's the last thing in her in her head. Okay. As it just brings you down, you all see this wolf just absolutely cover Neb. She disappears beneath its body as it, you know, wraps its jaws around her torso. Robin. Robin's oh, no, gonna... wait. It's Neb's turn. Death saving throw, please. Oh. Okay. Round number one. 
That's a fail. Oh no. Okay. Robin. Um would would grabbing and pulling Neb away count as an action, a bonus? What would that count? That would count as an action. Um you would also be playing tug of war with her with a wolf. Um but that doesn't mean you wouldn't win. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. I mean, I, I need to read this. Uh... I've always wanted to play Tug I get of War. The, I, I just I have never a... wanted to be the rope. <laughs> I have an inkling of what you're thinking of, and you can certainly attempt it. it take your action. I think... <sighs> Does that kill it? No, uh, no okay. Uh... I'm really nice. If you want to try to sell me as, as a bonus action. I I think as... My bonus action is going to be to, oh, can you take the disengage with the expeditious retreat? Let's see. It, it doesn't say, what's the spell that lets you do that? Then as a bonus action, you can use dash. I thought there was a, a haste. Oh, I must be thinking of haste, right? That gives you a third spell. That gives you, that, a, that gives another, you a third, action, another yeah. action. So yeah, so okay. the, the bonus action of expeditious, okay. expeditious retreat. So, um, how about the end? So you have it's it's just going. Um, okay. So you could use your action to grab her and your I bonus think... action to dash. Is that your plan? Is that what you were well, thinking? Okay. Okay. Sorry. So, uh, what if I used my? Can, what if I use my bonus action to charge the wolf and push it? I just to get it off. Okay. Of, no. Um. But again, because you have Expedition Retreat going, here's what I'll offer you. It's already up and going. You don't have to cast it again, right? right. Um, it just says, as a bonus action on each of your turns for the next 10 minutes, you can take the dash action. So that is your bonus action being used. I will allow you to use your, your movement as a potential try to shove. Well, and then, you know, use your movement and your action to shove it and grab her. Yes. Okay. Is that your thought? Yes, okay. it was my thought to to dash require, away with her, but that's what I'm whatever. saying. No, yeah. yeah. So using your movement to action. try to knock the the wolf off, okay. your action to grab her, and okay. your bonus action to use expeditious retreat to dash. Okay, let's try okay. it. <laughs> so it's gonna it's gonna we're gonna do checks. So we'll see okay, if you're successful it. at it. But I will offer that because I I love this idea. Okay, so. How would you like to get it off? Do you physically want to push it off? Do you want to scream at it? Do you want to intimidate it? Like, what is your, how do you want to get it, the wolf off of, of Neb? Um, I honestly think in her thought process, she's just going to, she's, she's going to push. Much, she's, she's just going to push. She's just going right. to, right, like, like a linebacker or whatever. <laughs> in, your, in your tennis stance. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like a linebacker mountain. You just rush forward at this thing. So this is going to be a strength check. You can use athletics yep. if that helps you. Okay. Okay. Please be good. Oh, God. <laughs> it's a seven. It's a seven. You run forward in, like, basically throwing yourself on top of this enormous wolf as you run up against it it's like hitting a brick wall <laughs> as you hit it you fall sort of backwards on you know on your 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 bum kind of with your your legs right down next to neb as it stares you in the face <sighs> i'm still gonna try to like you try to grab her and go away. yes all right you <laughs> grab her body you make to dash give me we'll do a contested strength to see who gets to hold on to neb I'm a chew yeah, toy, I'm everybody. So sorry. Great. Are you ready? Yeah, Nine. strength. It's everybody's oh favorite chew toy. Mm -hmm. oh, no. oh, oh, oh! What'd you get? I got a six. I only got an eight. It no. was closer than oh, you. I can't. I can't make oh. it roll so poorly. And it's still oh. So oh. as you go to grab her and you see the wolf, you know he's got his his paws on top of her and and even though you actually pull her like two feet out from underneath him but you can't quite get her you lose your grip as you start to try to use your expeditious retreat to to go now if you still would like to expeditious retreat you can you will take an op attack 
negative negative, negative. <laughs> stay. <laughs> I'm staying and I'm and actually if 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 there's time in the action yes uh I will lay over on top of Neb Ooh, okay. So as you pulled her out to, you know, two feet and this thing is staring you down, you just lay your body on top of Neb's body in front of you, uh, shielding her bloody face, you know, claw and tooth marks just all down the side. Silas. Okay. I'm right. This is, yeah, you're right there, there as well. And, um, Silas is going to try to wrestle the wolf in some way to let Neb free as well. Mm -hmm. um, how, um, I'm trying to visualize how he might best think that what I'm trying to accomplish is to yes. get her loose. And yes. then I'm going to do something else after that. Okay. So um, again, um, depending the, the something else that you want to do after that, is it a, an action bonus action or movement? A bonus action. It's a bonus action. Okay. So we'll still go with it. We're going to say, you're going to use your movement and action. You can use your action to try to steal her back okay. your movement to take her with you and your bonus action to do something else. Okay. Um, actually what the intent behind what I would do is yes. I want to, um, I want to wrestle. So essentially a grapple. Like okay. I'm trying to get you her free and okay. then I want to try to hold on to the wolf and then okay. see if I can get her up and then the two of them get back, maybe a retreat. Okay. So I think with what you have available, you would try to do something similar to what Robin attempted, which is actually to try to sort of rush the wolf and grapple the wolf, which would yes. completely free okay. Neb and Robin okay, and perfect. then they could handle the rest of it there. And that's going to be an athletics check, right? That'll be an athletics check because... to grapple a wolf. Okay. All right, here we go. Ooh, that was nice. Um, that is a, a 21 total. Oh, all right, check. let's see. Oh my God, I got a one. Okay. <gasps> Wow. So what, yeah, what do you do? Silas? So as, as basically, <laughs> um, as it's got its uh, yeah. paws on Neb, yes. um, I go and I grab the paw that is furthest from me. Uh -huh. And then I actually just roll and spin. Uh, so I did a little bit of wrestling in high school. Uh -huh. And then he ends up in a headlock uh, with, the, with the wolf. <laughs> And then he's he's holding it and kind of falling backwards. Right. And then he he looks down at Robin and Neb and says, "Fly, you fools!" And <laughs> as he does, um, it, it he uses <laughs> another expenditure of magical another energy. magical healing. And uh, let's see what that does to Neb. Yes, to Neb, and that's going to restore eight points. Uh, eight hit points. points. <laughs> um, Amazing. Wolf is just writhing back and forth, fighting you tooth and nail, but you've got, you know, a leg around one side holding the head and this side. You, when you rushed it, you basically like, like kneecapped it, right? And you kind of <laughs> rolled with it around and are holding it on the ground in the snow. Uh, your reflective pants just flashing. <laughs> tap out, head. tap out if you've had too much. <laughs> <laughs> reflective hammer pants. Is that all, Silas? That's enough, yeah. All right, Wolf Two is on you, Feruza. You've slashed through the 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 fur on one side as it <laughs> circles around the side of you here, and again snaps its bite in your direction. It's gonna miss. I'm pretty sure eight to hit. Yeah, no, it doesn't hit. All right, doesn't hit. <laughs> you also, as you pull it up, and it kind of you know snaps for you. You know, it just sort of misses right in front as you pull your gut in, but you could see it was going right for your intestines. It wants that warm, gooey organs. Uh, as it misses you, Maeve. Um, so I love being gross at this time. <laughs> no, I'm here. Yeah. For it. I hope you don't mind Neb, grossness because I'm Neb all is... about gore. <laughs> I I am here for it. <laughs> okay, good. Neb is up. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. uh, Neb is is Stable. no. Neb is still no, no, no. Neb is From... still death saving throws. No one has stabilized. Oh, oh no, oh no. You got to hit me. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. watch Neb as I'm still prone, no, I, and, and yeah. you Neb's just watch awake. her eyes slowly open. That's right. And then, like, just curiously look around, like, what happens? <laughs> um, I see what's happening here so yes. wolf one is still prone or is up uh no wolf one is the one that is grappled 
by the one that attacked you bit you the one that attacked neb so, is grappled right now by uh silas that's okay. the one that has some damage to it there's a second one um that has you know kind of crept up around the ice pool that's that Robin created. no no that's right. the that's i'm talking about the one near you oh okay. you don't you don't know about that wolf with Feriza. Right. So there, you only see two wolves, the one that is grappled and the one kind of stalking up around the side of that ice puddle. Uh, I mean, I I think I want to get the one that's grappled because okay. it seems the most logical to continue. So I go, You'll have I, see the, I see the courage that my peers are showing. Yeah. And um, I kind of I reach into my pockets and I have the the swiss army knife and that seems really not particularly it's a very small blade and i the only other thing i have is my letter opener and i'm going to pull that out and i am going to charge toward this and i'm going to say stay <laughs> um so i am warning it to stay warning it to stay gotcha. and i am going to attack with my letter opener which as soon as i take it out like yes. it feels different here yes. the weight on it feels the balance just feels different and mm -hmm. it feels comfortable in my hand a little bit in a way you know it's always felt safe right it's what what is it with us in snuggling with weapons um, <laughs> You all need, yes, you all need uh, cute, cute stuff. <laughs> Plushies of our... Plushies, yes. um, weapon lovies. Yeah, no, so my, my letter opener with the, yes. the gem at the end and everything. Um, Please and go ahead and roll your attack, but you have advantage on it. <sighs> okay. Hey, come, I'm holding it still. <laughs> oh, I rolled a 20 and a 1. <laughs> Please roll double your damage. Yes! Okay, so... This is going to be this plus. I can't wait to see how much damage a letter opener does. <laughs> Sorry, suspense. No uh, no, I love it. It's great. We're excited about this number. 26 points of damage Ooh. and it has been warned it has been warned um it doesn't remember because it immediately is eviscerated by your as letter as soon open. as that happens there is yeah. something about you know i had my eye on that creature yes, you did and as the life force drains out of it I am invigorated a little bit oh. by by the, the courage of having succeeded at this. Yes. And it my shoulder knits together a bit more. So yeah, as you know, your letter up and it was probably upside down. You know, Silas was holding it belly exposed and you just like gutted it something up the things. There's just is, is there blood. blood? Oh, there is a lot of blood, Silas. A uh, ton of blood, and I'm sure it's, it's the warmth of it is just pouring over your hands, Silas, as you hold on to this wolf that a bit begins to just convulse and suddenly go still as Maeve stands up strong. Well, Anything else, Maeve? Strangely good. <laughs> That's a bit unsettling. That was um, terrifying, but and, amazing. Thanks. And I'm my shoulder has completely healed over at this yeah. point yeah um and i am just going to turn and sort of ready myself for that the second other one. wolf okay it sees you and as you turn bloody letter opener in hand tall strong still the stain of blood on your jacket but yet no fear no pain you lock eyes with it It tucks its tail and kind of backs up a little bit from your gaze, kind of moving sideways, never taking its eyes off of you and turns, running off into the woods. Feruza. Yeah, that's right, you better run. <laughs> <laughs> what, they might can talk in this world, I don't know. 
Feruza, you are there in, in combat with this wolf, each of you taking, you both missed your blows, you're both pretty wily, sort of dodging each other out of the way. What would you like to do? Um, she's looking at this wolf and she's feeling like, you know, that whole sort of like, um, when you feel like you're in, you feel like you're in danger, things coming at you, sometimes yes. you want to like run right at it. And that's what she doesn't, she doesn't really realize what she's doing almost, but she looks at it and her eyes are like flashing. Like you see little sparks of lightning and she just growls back at it. Like <laughs> <laughs> she growls like right back at the thing. And she sort of twists the axe like in her hand. For some reason, she doesn't want to kill it outright, but she wants to uh -huh. knock it the heck out. Okay. And with the, with the broad side, she does like this. She does like a spin just because it's fancy. And she wants to <laughs> smack him with the broad side of the axe. Okay, great. Um, so do an attack roll, but we're going to change your damage to non-lethal bludgeoning. Um yeah. So go ahead and see if you hit. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <gasps> that was so unfair. 14 plus two, 16. 16? Mm -hmm. You hit. <gasps> go ahead, roll your damage. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Be nice to me. 14. 14. Okay. It is still standing. You can see it's kind of shaking its head a little bit, but it does not go down quite yet. It's not unconscious um, okay. as it is, um, but it sort of stands there and, and shakes its head a little disoriented. Anything else, Feruza? Um, She's just, because she just doesn't, isn't sure what's going on up ahead, she right. wants to like alert them that there's something going on back here. Maybe okay. to stay away. She's just going to scream as loud as she can. Okay. She can Scare the wolf also, but alert people there's something going on. Like just okay. loud. So the rest of you from, from up in the front, having seen this the, the, this one wolf completely eviscerated by Maeve and, and the other one just scared off by a glance, um, suddenly from behind you, you hear Feruza go, ah! This one's gone. Neb, what would you like to do? Deb has come back to consciousness and there's a weird calm. Yes. She looks at um, Robin and says, thanks. I, I, I got to get up. I got to get up. And All right. She's, she's going to stand up and uh, turn around. And does she see now that she's heard the yell? Does she see Feruza and you this can, wolf? You can see now Feruza and the wolf are both kind of camouflaged very well in this space. There's the trees and the snow and everything, but you do see Feruza. Maybe you see the shine of her ax as it, you know, she rises it above, raises it above her head. Um, you know, you heard her, her yell and you can see again, a big creature. And because you've seen the other wolves, pretty easy to guess that that's what that is. And there's this weird bemused look on her face and she's going to awkwardly stumble in that direction. Yeah. And Silas's words are ringing in her head about maybe these things can talk. You never know. And she's going to look at this other wolf. Hey, you don't have to do this, you know? You don't have to. And she's going to try to speak with it. Okay. <laughs> and I mean, I will cast it as yes. well. And would you like to make a persuasion check? Uh, yeah, yeah. She's trying. Idea? She's really trying. Okay. Oh. Whoa. So there's something maybe she's trying to be uh, very, please don't, please don't. And yes. maybe also the sight of the eviscerated one behind her is yes. helping because I rolled a 24. <gasps> well, I rolled much lower than that in my contest. So as you, 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 you know, you stumble forward and there's still, you know, you've got broken ribs and it's a little hard to breathe as you move forward, but still you, you eke out, you don't have to do this out into the snow. Feruza, you see it kind of stop. It's still looking at you, it's tense, but it looks off in the trees and it sort of stands up straight takes a step forward, looks back at you, Feruza, turns back to you, 
cocks its head to the side and starts to try to walk forward very slowly. It keeps its eyes on you, Feruza. It does want to step away from you. You can take an op attack if you'd like. I was going to say, can I go after this? Okay. Does it have to know what the op attack, it has to be unarmed or can it be armed, anything? It's the same weapon that you're wielding. So it would be uh, the non-lethal, you know, back of your... Is the wolf around. trying to come towards me? It's coming towards you, but slowly, one step I at 21. a time. 21. Sorry? 21. 21 will hit, Feruza. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and roll me your, your non-lethal damage for that. Four. Four? I rolled a natural one. Plus three. What is going on with my dice? And, and I'll see you do that and yell out, wait, 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 wait. Um, okay, give it a second. As it tries to leave your space, you, you yeah. knock at it, you know, trying to just knock it down, something with the, with the flat side of your blade. Um, mm -hmm. It's back end, you sort of hit it on its spine, its legs kind of drop to the ground a little bit as it kind of... <laughs> Looking straight at you, Neb, your eye is locked as it kind of pulls itself forward on its two front legs towards you. What are you, are, are you talking to that? Neb, do I hear it? Do I understand what it's saying? You hear it say. Pain. <laughs> Hungry. <laughs> Brother, give, arr, 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 arr. Give, it, give it a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't know if we're still in initiative, but we she can wouldn't... be out of initiative if you would like. I will walk towards it. Uh, I mean, it's, it's Maeve's turn, so if Maeve is yeah. willing to come out of initiative, I just want to make it sure. It looks like it is not attacking. It doesn't. It doesn't, I mean, does not I, I appear to be attacking. Prepared, but gotcha. I will not attack it if it is not attacking okay. us actively. So Maeve and then um, Feruza, that's mm -hmm. also you. So if you two are willing to step out of initiative, yes, definitely. Okay, I see what's going on here? Okay. Then I have my eye on Neb, and it's your axe is ready. You know, you you don't have yeah. to you don't have to kind of leave your readied state. But um, mm -hmm. if you both forego your rounds, all right, go ahead now. Yeah. I'm sorry, but you, you attacked us. Why did you attack us? Again, you hear a little whimper. <laughs> Hungry. My friends and I are not food. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the in the simplest uh, uh, language ever, you hear, "I beg to differ." <laughs> <laughs> it, it, what you hear is you hear, uh, "We are all food." <laughs> Continuing to attack us is just gonna get us all hurt like your brother two more wolves come up along beside it they don't attack but they look at you again their heads kind of cocked to the side Neb, you got you gotta tell this thing if, if you're actually talking to you gotta tell it that if they all don't leave us alone they're gonna end up like that one like, 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 let them know that we're going to kill them all unless they give us safe passage. Uh, the one in front of you gets to its four legs. It towers over you, Neb, as you stand there looking up at it. Its face, huge face. It's the muzzle right up close in front of you. Hot breath breathing out towards you. You're looking for food. We're not food, but we can help. Oh I'm going to rummage around in my pack and I'm going to pull out one of the granola bars. Advantage <laughs> persuasion, please. Or, or like, animal handling. You could do advantage animal handling. Oh, oh, oh. Seeing what she's doing, may yes. I also reach into my bag and pull yes. out some food? 
you may. That helps. I'm, I'm gonna... Gonna look really wild right now. <laughs> what is your <laughs> wisdom bonus? Uh, uh, plus maybe? one. Plus one. Okay. I'm going to stick with persuasion. You stick with persuasion. Okay. Yeah. Because you are talking to it. I, I you can do that. Okay. And what was uh, Maeve? What, what plus did you one. Me? Okay. So that's a 16 as 16. I, she, she's, she looks, there's Unless like I can awe. do persuasion with her. Uh, no, you're, it would, I mean, oh, your persuasion, nope. your charisma. That's right. Go yeah, ahead and do charisma. charisma. So what's so your charisma? Plus four. Instead. Plus four. So now oh. we're up to uh, 18 I, or I've 19. I've lost numbers. 15, Wait, what were 16, you? 70, eight, eight, 18. 18. Yeah. Yeah. 18. And like, she looks, she's surprised and in awe and there's like a little bit of fear. She's shakily unwrapping this granola bar and yes. says, you don't have to kill each other. As you hold it out in front of you, and Maeve, you step up next to her, also holding out some food in front of you. It sniffs. You can feel the paper rustles in the sort of the power of the breath of this creature. The wind blows its, you know, its fur to the side as the other two sort of sit. Off to the side, looking at you. It bends down, takes the granola bar out of your hand, begins to chew it, crumbs falling to the ground on the snow in front of you. It looks over mm -hmm. to its brothers, looks back towards you, takes the one out of Maeve's hands and tosses it with its head towards the other two who dive on it, devouring it. We have one more, don't we? I, I have two more in my bag, but at okay. this point, Hey, maybe tell them that if they want to pull the sled, that <laughs> there's more where that came from. No. We do have MREs. <laughs> do those? There's, there's a moment in the back of um, Neb's head in where she's now picturing like that idea of like, and now we have sled dogs. I and did the a rod. reality of this yeah. creature in front of her snaps her back away from that fantasy. <laughs> We are not food, but we can work together to get more food together. You're that hungry. As it sort of looks towards the remains of its brother, not 15 feet away, it turns back to you, it says, enough blood and turns its back walking over to its two living brothers who then walk off into the snow disappearing into the trees I'm just going to stand there watching them walk away <laughs> you can still smell its breath lingering in front of you did that just happen Ned? <laughs> that was spectacular wow I've never seen anything like that. I can hear it. Silas, you were right. It was, I could hear it. It's like we went through a wardrobe. I didn't hear it, but you did. <laughs> what did it say? It said there was enough, enough blood. I don't At think- At the word blood. Yes. Silas. Your kind hands, of your understands I mean, what's going on, and something should be triggered with yes. that bloodbath. Yeah, sure. Okay, um, Silas, we and actually, um, we're gonna we'll cover this for you as well, Neb. Silas, uh, we're gonna do a a reverse guidance on wisdom checks for you. So we are going to roll a d4 and subtract that from wisdom checks for a little while here until you can get cleaned up um then we're gonna go uh neb because you made a death saving throw yeah uh, i this mean is how that, we're playing this game here yeah that healing got her back up but i think like you said, yeah it mentally went for her face, exactly like it's and she's yeah. so um your ribs got crushed right like broken ribs probably punctured a lung the fact that you had this magical healing that seemed to sort of fix your ribs and fix your lung doesn't mean that there's still not a bruise 
there and and a, and a and a trauma in your brain in your brain that's kind of reminding you of that and so every time you make a constitution saving throw for the next day uh we will also do a minus d4 to that and silas is kind of keeping himself from retching and yes. is is like literally at this point trying to roll around in the snow or yep. anything else trying there. to clean off i mean it's still it's right there there's this you know the, the body of this wolf with the blood pouring out, there's still Maeve's blood and Neb's blood in the snow, um, you know, sort of seeping in. Uh, so it is all around you still. So we'll keep that, we'll keep yeah. that D4 on you until you can actually get to some water or get cleaned up. Mm -hmm. Might I mention <laughs> that we're not even 50 feet from the train? <laughs> I was thinking something I, I mean, if it, if it had to happen, at least... If we want, we can turn around and try again tomorrow. I, mean, I didn't want to squash the epic quest before it even really got off the ground. <laughs> I mean, that wasn't epic. I mean, yeah, that was. But, but what I'm saying is, there's more. There's more out there like that. That was three, right? That was three. Well, four. Four One, potentially. Four, three. Yeah, because and was you don't know how two, many more, but three, four revealed five. themselves. Because we killed one, there was this, the second one over there. There was the one on Feruza, and then you said two more came out of the woods. So there were five. Yeah, but we that just revealed go around this and go back to the tracks. It'll be it'll be fine from here. I'm sure nothing else will happen. I did say if we stayed with the tracks, we should be safe. <laughs> she did say that. Well, you she also say that. Says, I told you so. How do you intend for us to to clear the the boulders there? With Sheer determination. <laughs> Sheer determination does not turn a pile of boulders into a hill. No, but sheer determination turns a, a, a forceful yell into attacking a, a wolf with your letter opener. That was amazing. Yeah. Oh, you, she killed something with a letter was... opener? <laughs> and I just look down at, I'm assuming you're still holding your letter opener, right? Yeah. I just look at it and Silas looks in awe, but then sees the blood again and just kind of turns away quickly. Uh, I just sort of wipe it off and kind of clean it up as best I can and then sort of put it back in the pouch I keep it in. Okay. Um, and I keep kind of grabbing my head. I pull out a bottle, the bottle of Advil, and I take some Advil. Okay. <laughs> Want to do a medicine check? Uh, sure. It's, I'm actually at full health. Oh, you are? Okay, great. So this is just mm -hmm. for, for funsies. For <laughs> this funsies. is funsy medicine. <laughs> Let's get around the bin and get back to the track, at least. Like, I am not looking forward to pulling this back up the hill to get to no. the tracks. I'm hoping it's going to smooth out at some point. Okay, cool. So uh, Silas is voting to continue through the woods, down around the end of the avalanche. We were close, to come right? up. It's, you're about halfway. Oh, hmm. We had just We're rounded halfway. like the, you just the rounded corner. the tip, yeah, the sort of end of it. Yeah, before we got ambushed. Yep. Um, I didn't we, see too much are... else ahead. It seemed that the snow thinned a bit yeah. here and there the, the, in patches yeah. up ahead. Well, you guys yeah. should know that wolves uh, they kind of dominate the area. So as as long as the wolves aren't attacking us, I can't imagine there'd be much more around. Apex predator. Point. Yes. <laughs> so there can't but, be anything worse. Yeah. I, I, I know. Can't. I don't Apex want to think of any more. I know. I had always heard that wolves were a lot bigger than just dogs. That was that really just a wolf? A bunch of wolves? It was a lot bigger. That wasn't a, were a wolf. That was that was one of Silas's uh, a video wolf. game monster. <laughs> Maybe they I attacked mean, us because their friend is in our train in a prison made of silver. No, no, it it just it said they were hungry. They were they just thought we were food. Oh, I guess well, that's, that's true. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I think I think uh, you all dispatching one of them probably helped convince it otherwise. But uh, yeah, it, it it talked to me, which makes me think maybe it's not the only apex predator around here that would be Maeve <laughs> <laughs> I mean yeah Maeve and Feruza are pretty pretty there's a glint in her eye yes 
the glint has actually faded quite a bit okay and, the glint it, and sort of the reality of what she's just done gotcha. is setting in a little and it's disconcerting gotcha okay have you always been able to speak to creatures neb no 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 i mean i mean squirrels are cute but I don't, i've never talked to one but something about the way silas said something well, i didn't even think book. it was going to talk back i just thought i could talk t to it and just scare it away so and neb you told me that those books weren't actually going to help us here i'm just saying I don't know if any books helped, but I, I don't even know how I did it, but they did talk to me. Oh boy. So the wolves talked to you and Silas sang a song and healed my shoulder. Yeah, I just say say stuff sometimes too. Like it's it's happened like three times at least now. What did you sing? Uh, never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down. I feel yeah, like that. that's almost uh, like there should be something negative when I'm Rick hearing Cole. that, but <laughs> also I'm that's so amused. It's, it's the way he sings it. And, and Robin, you you can speak to spirits, and Feruza, you tore that door apart. What's totally happening magic. here? Totally magic. I mean, I don't know what's going on, but it's amazing and a little terrifying. And ow. I don't know. I don't know what to think. What I do know is that we're halfway from the train and halfway to. So it's either the devil, you know. I say we go know. forward. Oh, yes. we're halfway there. And, and oh, Silas just starts singing. Living and, out of prayer. And at I this point, it. though, he is giving some inspiration okay. through this Bon Jovi <laughs> to Maeve to because Maeve. he is assuming that she is going to continue to scout ahead. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, um, so yeah, as I, you all are sort of speaking, you found this neat little, little clearing, stepped a little bit away from the area of the event um, and are just sort of reckoning with what you've seen that when you were pushed to the brink that strengths powers came out of you that you perhaps didn't know were there before and as you look back at the train and you look back around ahead you can see it's just another 50 feet around the side of this and you can break through the tree line on the other side of this avalanche back up at the tracks what would you like to do i would like to take a swig of my whiskey <laughs> Anyone else? That? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pass around the flask. You all make a circle as you pass Maeve's oh. flask. Is this a special flask, Maeve? Does it have any decoration on it or anything? Um, or engraving? A, this one is uh, fairly plain looking. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Fairly this plain is, looking this flask. This is, is the, the fairly plain looking one. Is the yeah. liquor within it also fairly plain or is it yeah, it's, it's just whiskey. Just whiskey. Yeah, it's just whiskey. <laughs> Good just call. Kind of whiskey. All of you feel the fire as it, you know, go whoever whoever partakes <laughs> as it, you know, goes down your throat. It warms your chest and your belly as it enters mm. your body. Uh you can <sighs> grab your sled and proceed whichever Push, way you Yeah, want. we keep pushing. Uh, All right, Silas. Do you do you think you can pull the sled without me for a, a little oh, bit? Yeah, I've got it. Sure. Okay. I can help you. I can help you. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. We've got a long way to go. So you begin to continue through this side. Uh, Maeve and Robin, were you going to scout ahead yet again? I'm letting Maeve, but I'll okay. be. I'll, got, I got her back. Same as before. Okay, you got her back, so she's not fully alone. All right, Maeve, go ahead and give me a stealth check if that's the plan. While she's doing that, you are inspired. I, oh, that's another natural twenty. Oh, yes. nice. oh, oh. Okay, sorry, uh, Neb. Was there something you wanted to add to with that, or? Uh, not to that. Okay. I mean, there's nothing I can add what to that. Add? Um, yeah. but I was, I, I was gonna say. Um, that ability to talk to the wolves, yes, it sticks around for a little while. Fantastic. 
I'm just putting it out there. Please and, do. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and I think Neb is half babying her ribs and then half just like keeping an eye out for the squirrels, chipmunks, whatever. Fantastic. Now she's like, wonder what else talks out here. Fantastic. As as Silas is trudging ahead, yes. um, he is convinced at this point in time that he can detect magic in some form. And so okay. um, over the next 10 minutes or so, He's just reciting like um, and, and kind of trying to pay, pay extra special attention. It's like he falls into the zone like MJ. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and, and he's going to actually continue to repeat that uh, until, um, until something distracts him from, gotcha. from that. Uh, because it, you know, it's roughly 10 minutes, uh, 10 minutes on, 10 minutes off. Okay, great. All right. Uh, so Maeve, yes, with your natural 20 critical stealth <laughs> even robin loses you uh she's trying to keep up and keep you in her vision but you just something about the woods you just seem to know where the shadows are and where to step um and you get ahead of people fairly fairly quickly um you now a bit more hip to you know what's around and goes you, you you know you're sensing some of the crack of twigs but you're got your eye on it you do notice a couple of snowy owls up in the top that are mostly sort of you know sleeping this is their downtime but you you know every once in a while their head kind of turns and their eyes kind of clock you as you move by uh, but you make your way towards the tree line unmolested um, it is a bit of an uphill once you get passed around that corner, um, it's, you know, going to be about 30 feet of trying to pull this sled. Up Is the there, it. if we get up to the hill though, <laughs> yes. I don't doubt that. Um, if we get up to the hill, is there a flat enough area for us to be able to continue along? Once you get onto the tracks, there's flat either inside the tracks or on either side of the tracks that you can will the, follow. Will the sled go in, uh, in the tracks? Yeah, you have think? to sort of bump it up over Got the, okay. the actual That's iron, perfect. but it'll it'll go on the snow in between the tracks. Just yes. wanted to be sure before we did all this. But yes, 30 feet okay. uphill with the sled. Okay. I will come um, back when, and when, everyone in. Okay. I'll go ahead, May. Go ahead. Um, and sort of give some advice on how to maybe navigate okay. some of that going over the ledge you could do a survival for that if you would like one other thing that i know how to do yes um i might suggest so that's a an 11 survival okay but if you turn it around when you go uphill sometimes that can make it easier if you turn it around and push it rather than try and pull it I, but but at the same time, like we can also um, use um, some of the rappel gear here to possibly um, use some kind of pulley to help get it up as well. Because as long as somebody can get up uh, top, uh, does somebody? I don't know. Like I don't actually know. Are they called pythons or pitons or pitons? Piton. Oh, so none of the above, basically. <laughs> I don't know. That's a word that I have only ever read. So, uh, so for the pitons, Shamalaya. Um, like if if we get those and we are able to and and I can probably get up there initially without the sled, then we can we can really stake some of that in okay. the ground. We can use the track, whatever we can, and then we can have we can use some of the paracord, whatever we we've got, and then we can pull, and somebody can just be up there to receive it. Or I can just try pulling it. It really isn't as heavy <laughs> as I thought it would be, you guys. I, I, I mean, I don't know. Go go, go ahead, like I. If you can do it, that's fantastic. Well, I mean, Let's I try your way first, at least. So it's 30 feet. So Frieza, Frieza, if you were going to attempt it, it would be two athletics checks to pull it up. People can help you if they would like to. I mean, I kind of want to see if she can do it. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I mean, because she wasn't pulling it before, remember? She was just behind, I know. Sort of I know. guiding. So she didn't realize what it really felt like, you know? Yeah. Um, and she's... I mean, everyone's sort of talking about what they were thinking after all of this, yes. like Maeve and Nevis and yes. Silas and Robin. So for, for Ruza, she's sort of like, she was alarmed at how she acted when the wolf faced her, like the way her heart raced and how her, how her skin just flashed. And so when she was pulling this thing now, the memory of that sort of heightened her, what's inside of her again. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. let's see how, let's see how we do here. Let's see how we do. Give me a strength check. A seven and, oh my gosh, a seven and an eight. 
Mm. At eight total? Oh, dear. <laughs> okay. So all oh, this yes. poor, poor Feruza. Um, like so, <laughs> you look so confident. You're like, let me just see if I can do it. I don't need your help. And do. yeah, you grab this thing, you hook yourself into it. And I think immediately as you, as you go up, it just, the snow starts to get thick again and you just get stuck. You know, you have to use your strength, not only to pull your legs out of the snow, but also pull this thing forward uphill. Um, and you kind of, you know, feel like, oh, you know, that first one didn't work. Maybe yeah. a little help would be yeah. beneficial. I don't know, you guys. I thought it, it just seemed like I had um, some sort of pulley thing going on earlier, but it is actually kind of a uh, heavy morning <laughs> no if you turn it around and you we can push from push behind it. that can be a way and if we sort of swivel it up it's a it's a trick i had learned like sort of diagonal it up maybe yeah uh, sort of right. almost like switchbacks yeah all right okay um who was going to help so you're going to try pushing Feruza, is that the, the yes. plan okay so you come pushing. back around to the back side yeah. is anyone going to help her push yeah silas will help. okay silas will so silas what is your strength modifier um, it is, sorry, let's see, it's plus one. Plus one. All right, Feruza, give me a strength check, um, plus one from Silas. Oh, and you can, you can 20. still have your, it's a 20? 20. 20, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Using the, you know, the suggestion that you got from Maeve and Silas, you know, even if, you know, he's just got kind of one hand on the side because it's hard to fit both of you next to it, but just being able to push it up you use all of the weight you brace yourself in the snow now the snow is helping you because it's keeping yeah. you from falling backward as you sort of push it up and kind of go a little bit sideways you know almost like you're like you're sailing and tacking a little bit or, or uh, switch backs like a train would do um and you're sort of pushing it up you make it 15 feet up give me another one nice to get up Good suggestion, the Dave. Thanks. <laughs> you're doing fantastic hey. And at this point, just in yes. case, um, Silas is going to say, hey, listen, like, yeah. um, because I, and he's going to say this very soft to just um, Feruza, like, look, it was, it was a really good try earlier, but, um, you know, honestly, I, I'm not helping much. So I just wanted you to know that, that actually, like, you are way stronger than you look and a um, little bit of inspiration there too. Hey. So you can add a D6 you to You can it. add a D6 to this roll. Oh, goodness. So go ahead and roll and make your strength checks. Uh, yeah. Silas, do you still going to add your plus one? Okay. Uh, yes. Nice. Oops. I bet. <laughs> Three. Let's have 15. A 15. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. So with a 15, again, you just and you, you actually pull away from Silas as you kind of, you know, back and forth. He gives it that first shove, but it's you that gets it up onto the flat surface. And Silas does a flourish and like let, when he lets go, and it's just like, <laughs> look at her. Um, and you, you feel invigorated and strong. The the cold like little, around little, like, sparkly, you, sparkly. yeah. Yes. And the cold around you seems to be sort of bracing you and giving yeah, you that helping. extra. Yeah. Like um, the cold is bolstering. Like she's feeling at home out here for the first time in the yeah. cold. And as you get up there, feeling that victory in your body, beautiful, light little snow flurries begin to fall around you. <gasps> Almost on cue. Huh. <sighs> I mean, it's pretty, but this is going to suck. <laughs> she looks so Silas, you're ruining my moment. <sighs> as soon as you say you're ruining my moment, kind of a little gale of wind blows past your face in that moment. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Fabulous hair happening. <laughs> Um, all right, you are able to bump this uh, sled up onto the between the tracks, set yourselves up to start walking forward. We will speed this up a little bit. It is about 30 to 45 minutes of a bit of a hike here. You drink water from the bottles that you bring. You, you know, grab some more granola and some snacks when you can. And suddenly around the bend up above, and this is, I mean, a gorgeous landscape. And every once in a while you hear the of an elk or a moose somewhere off in the distance, uh, the roar of a bear, uh, the growl of a wolf. Um, yes, and every Ned, time I'm yes. like, oh, oh. Uh, as you do, mostly it's just kind of you hear things like, 
or you know like where are you it's all very here in the wilderness <laughs> dinner's ready you know kind of things just happening Mom, you Mom. look hot <laughs> uh, you know just those kinds of Oh, I didn't realize there was so much chatter in the woods. A lot of chatter. Um, but it, I mean, just stunning. There are places where, it, you know, the trees clear away and you could just feel like you see for miles and there's just mountains off in the distance. Um, and off to the side, again, this one mountain that you're up along the side of, you know, just the snow going up in the distance, you know, up to the top, the tree line getting thinner as it goes higher. Finally, you come around a bend. And there is quite a large clearing. Now it is covered in snow and you can see that there are a number of switch tracks that come off. So a bunch of tracks that kind of connect to this one. On those tracks, you see at least two um, hand carts. Um, hand cars or uh, also, let's see what I said, what it's called. Um, pump trolleys would be the other way to call those so hand cars are pump <laughs> trolleys so these are you know they're on four wheels it's just a flat platform of wood and in the center is a little seesaw <laughs> you, were, little, you were right yeah. Neb this is like <laughs> some temple of doom stuff here. I totally <laughs> thought that this might be a cartoon thing I did not realize it was real and I am so you know, as long as there aren't boxes too. labeled TNT I think we're fine Acme there are no Acme boxes no. I am not yeah, walking it's almost into as bad as Chekhov brand. <laughs> if, if we see what looks like a tunnel, make sure you touch it first and make sure it's not actually just paint. <laughs> oh. Always good but the good advice. news is you won't fall unless you notice that you're in the air. <laughs> never look down. Never look down. Never look down. <laughs> with, with the incidents of the last hour, that's uh, entirely a, a possibility and quite concerning. <laughs> So there are these push trolleys that connect to this main track. Um, they also then connect to a track that goes into a hole in the side of this mountain. As you can see, there are two posts on either side of wood that have created kind of, um, you know, uh, uh, door jams and a lintel that goes across the top. Um, as you come closer to it, there are icicles just hanging down over the front of this, almost to the ground, uh, creating almost sort of bars across the front of this mine. And etched into the wood of the lintel above is the name Steve. <gasps> It and we're actually gonna, we're gonna cut it a little bit short here and say that with that <laughs> we will conclude this chapter of Children of Erte. You have found Steve's mine, the mine of Steve. Oh, um, Steve. And please remember until we come back next time that life itself is the most wonderful fairy tale. Good night, everybody. <laughs>